Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Prophetess T aka Renee Tarot and I'm here to talk to you about astrology this time. The um, thing that I want to talk about is the truth about the 12th house and the other houses in natal charts. Now I've heard so many people talking about the 12th house. Um, it's a very popular house to discuss in blogs and also on YouTube channels. Now I do have my window open so you may hear some noise but I really do want to have it open today. Um, this particular input can be considered as part of the tools that we'll be going into when we talk about the um, spiritual science lesson that we'll be getting into next week. Now, um, as a person with a 12 house stellium plus, which means I have more than eight houses or more than four houses in the 12th house, I definitely feel like I can talk about these the, this house. Um, in addition to that, Every zodiac sign is at home in my houses. So everything is where it's supposed to be. Aries in the first house all the way up to Pisces in the 12th house. So everything is kind of operating in the way that it should be. Now, I want to just put in a little bit of a commercial in here. I do have a new book called Think You're Cut Out to Be a Superstar. And it's about the astrology of superstars and what to look for in a superstar um, pop singer. I will put a link to that in my info box. Now, I also want to explain that, just quickly delving into this topic, each tool that you use with regard to divination or spirit science or um, non-traditional religion is kind of like a doorway that has the potential to get the attention of the masters who live in those houses. Um, if you follow my Dreamscapes page on Facebook, I talk about a dream that I had where I went into a mansion and I saw tarot cards figures hanging there and basically hanging out there. And basically it was a, a dance, a masquerade ball where they were inviting me to come in because the masters who reveal information about these tools exist on other planes and they are the best teachers. They are the best ones to go through. We'll talk about that in the spirit science class. Now, um, before I do any type of YT or YouTube videos on this, I kind of question my motives. I want to ensure that I'm doing everything that's helpful to cover um, these topics and not just for views. And I do hope and I will that only those people who really need to know this information and who are going to use it for good purposes and to help people will see these videos. Um, if I get millions of views, great that that many people want to see these videos. Great for me. But if I don't, even though I'm a partner with YouTube, I, I'm sure that the in the universe has always ensured that I have everything that I need. So this is not about just getting views and for shock value. Um, I used to feel like when I was reading charts, specifically natal charts, which is kind of my specialty in astrology, that I just couldn't get enough information. I mean, it's like, okay, you've got your 12 astrological signs, you've got 12 houses, the blah, 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 blah. But how do I delve into this? And so what I found out was that the houses and the charts are, um, they're like wheels within wheels. Everything is within, everything is within, everything is the perfect example of sacred geometry where one house is revealing various levels of a specific thing. And there are certain aspects of these houses that as we continue to study this ancient science, more is revealed to the learners and the masters and the teachers that exist at any present time. Now, there have been times where I have looked at an astrological chart and everything just shut down on me. I just, it's like, I couldn't remember what the symbols were. It just looked like mumbo jumbo. At that point, I would call it a day and say, it's not for me to do this time. This is not something that I could just do when I want to. It's not like that. Now, that's what I just said is typical of the 12th house. People who have... Um, a lot of natal um, relevance in the tr in the twelfth house typically will self correct. They a lot of people call it um, self sabotage, but re what it really is is that you don't wait for somebody to come and lock you up, and you don't wait for to be arrested, and you don't wait you. 
you typically will see that you're doing something wrong and you'll see that there's something wrong with you and you will stop it yourself. And so sometimes when I feel that sense of foreboding to stop looking at a chart or not to delve into somebody's chart, especially when, especially if they haven't asked me to, I, I just use, I just get away from it and I won't, I won't use this ancient, very special knowledge for that purpose. Um, this is something that's typical of people who have specifically sons in the 12th house. And these people have considerably been people who teach and people who write because they understand as creators that they um, have a lot of power and their ability to disseminate information, specifically if they have mercury in either the 10th house or the 12th house, or if they have the sun in the 10th or the 12th house, these people probably will have a lot of influence and they have to be careful what they say because they know they can really um, affect people. Now, um, let's see here. Some people will get into this art of foretelling and past telling because you can tell the, the future and the past with an astrological chart. And they will just tell you everything you want to know. Well, people in the 12th house, if they are, they happen to be a reader or an advisor or a counselor or a psychic, they won't tell you everything that you ask. Because I'll give you an example. Once a lady um, who knew her husband was having an affair and he had admitted to the affair asked me if I could tell her who the name of the person was. And I did receive a name. Um, the doorway had been open. I was using divination tools to get the information for her. And since the doorway was open and the masters were in there and they saw me when I opened the door, the name came to me, but I was basically given like, a, I wasn't able to release it to her. And so what I told her very nicely was that, yes, I do have a name, but I cannot release it to you because it'd be somebody very close to you that could really hurt you. And, you know, it could just ruin a lot of stuff. And it's not for me to give you the name because I believe that you guys are supposed to heal. Now, they have gone on to repair their marriage and have another child. So by me not divulging information, it just really helped the situation. And that's why people who have lots of planets in the 12th house really make pretty good readers because they know what's good for people. They kind of have a an un, they have a very, very good knowledge of universal law. They're just born with it. So if they do something wrong, they kind of know what they're doing. Um, with regard to um, house readings, you have, and this is still part of the general, just delving into it. If you don't understand conjuncts, squares, opposites, trines, you just don't even need to be doing house astrology. It's no way you can do it. It's no way you can do it and be effective. Let me give you an example of a 12th house reason why you can't do that. If you look at somebody's natal chart and they have a whole bunch of negativity in the sixth house. So you think they're going to be sick, whatever, blah, 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 but they're not, and you don't understand it. Well, everything in the tenth, in the 12th house opposes the things in the sixth house. So if a person has the right placements in the 12th house, everything that it's going to just directly oppose everything in the sixth house. Now for me, I'm a woman who is overweight, and I actually heard from the masters of that house, the sixth house, that it was the house of appetites, the house of desires, the house of wants, what people want that they may not necessarily need. And so um, I like, I have an addictive personality. I can be very addicted to things, things that I like. It could be a sexual addiction. It can be um, an alcohol addiction. It could be a um, addition to food. So I have a tendency to really battle my weight. But because Virgo is at home there, it helps me to keep everything under control and not to go just off the wazoo where they have to like take my roof off and get a helicopter to lift, airlift me to some kind of hospital. But at the same time, I have some good placements in my 12th house that attribute themselves to divine healing. So I've had like at least three different episodes in my life where even though my sixth house was afflicted, 
I suffered, I, I enjoyed um, divine instantaneous healings to never go back to those diseases again. So the 12th house in that aspect saved my, my hide. So your 12th house will directly oppose the 6th house and it will square um, the other, the house that it squares, it will help to offset those houses as well. And these are good things. These are things that will help you when you get to a point where you're, you're, you don't have to be afraid of the 12th house. Let's just put it that way. Now, from a standpoint of the confinement, 12th house is basically self-confinement. Um, it's a situation where you just don't want to be around people because most likely you're empathic. Most likely people wear you down. They wear you out. You can be someone who is highly psychic in the 12th house. And because of the motivations of the people, it can wear you down because you're taking on their personalities. So you will self-confine when you are in the 12th house. It is not a house of confinement as in somebody else can find you. It's a house of self-confinement. And one of the things I've noticed from studying the charts of people who are in jail is that they feel comfortable in jail. They feel like they needed to be put in jail because jail was the only thing that could save them. And a lot of people will say that when you have mental illnesses, a lot of times you can't get the help you need in a regular mainstream society. The only place you can get help for mental illness is in prison. And it's sad, but in many cases, it's true. So don't look at the 12th house as a place where, where you're just confined. There are other things that will will get you confined with regard to that house. And I'll get to that just a, just a little bit later. Now, the second thing about the house is, is that they're like a clock. I, I mentioned that they are a wheel within wheels. Um, they also are... Um, a clock of life and a clock of generations and a clock of your existence as a soul. So you're looking at various things and each piece in the house tells you what you're looking at. Are you looking at an occurrence that happened in your childhood? Or are you looking at where you are in your existence as a soul? You have to know the difference of what you're looking at even to even begin to look at the houses. Um, if you typically the smaller asteroids will indicate situations that are occurring in your life. And this is why time of birth is important. Quick example, um, there was a person who had a um a rape in her chart, and it I didn't have her time, so I went with noon, her time of birth. I went with noon, and she ended up having I was like, I, you know, I knew this person. I was like, you, were you, did you have any kind of instance with a sexual abuse situation as a child? She's like, I don't remember anything. And then she was like, I think I was born at X amount of time. And I, and I put that time in. And then that's when I saw that it happened when she was in her early twenties. And I was like, okay, yeah, this happened in your early twenties. What was it? She was like, yeah, this guy, he forced himself on me and it was a, it was a rape situation. I was like, okay. I see it now. So you can still read a person's natal chart and you can tell them generally what's going to happen to them when they um, have um, certain instances in their chart, but you can't tell them when it's going to happen. So that's another thing about the 12th house. The 12th house tells you when something is happening. It's going to happen later in life. 12th house is the house of old age. It's the house of maturity. It's the house of the end of life. So a lot of things that you find in the 12th house will occur when that person is aged. Now, there's another thing about the 12th house that people need to understand. Back in the um, hundreds of years ago, there, became, there came out some writers of astrology who called themselves Raphael. Now, they it said that there were various different Raphaels. And it was kind of like they were channeling a spirit named Raphael, but it was coming through different people. One of the things that Raphael taught was that houses can be, they can actually indicate who, the house itself, or it can be an indication of another house. For instance, if you want to know about something having to do with your children and you look in your own fifth house, well, if you look at the eighth house of the fifth house, or the second house of the fifth house. And what I mean by that 
is um, let's take your fifth house and then you go eight houses from there, including your fifth house. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. The 12th house then indicates the death of your child. That is something that people do not know. They don't understand. They think everything having to do with their child, their children, will be in the fifth house. But you can find out things about your children in the 12th house. So let's say that a mother who's going to have a child who dies... Um, the eighth house from her twelfth, her fifth house is her twelfth house. She has Mars in the twelfth house. Well, that could mean that her child may die a very harsh death. It could mean certain many things, but you have to read the entire house, the house, all of the chart to kind of see what you're looking at. And in some cases, you have to look at the child's chart and the father's chart or the the brother's chart. Give you an example. So the mother has Mars in the 12th house. The child has Saturn in the third house. And the child's brother has um, some affliction at Pluto in the in the third house. Okay. It could in or it could indicate that the child had an accident with his brother when he was young. He passed away and it caused her much affliction. So in that case, you you read the charts of people close to other people kind of to determine what's in the 12th house of that one person. Was that crazy, guys? I hope not. Now, the other thing is that um a lot of people say things about Saturn in the eighth house and I have actually heard people say Saturn in the eighth house is a sign of long life. Please, somebody help help explain that to me. I would, would love for one of you astrologers to explain that to me because my understanding is that Saturn in the eighth house, basically, in one sense, it means that you're going to die in middle age. That is the house of martyrs, people who die for a cause. They're old enough to have spoke out for the cause, lived a little while, sired some children, and then they pass away in their 30s and 40s. Martin Luther King has Saturn in the eighth house. You've got a few other people, like people who died in middle age. John Belushi has Saturn in the eighth house. Um, but Saturn in the in the third house, it's just speaking about houses, Saturn in the third house, Saturn in the fourth house indicates in many cases, in some cases, a child who dies early. Okay, so Saturn in a house, Saturn in the 12th house means that most likely you will live a long time. Okay, my thoughts, that's how I see it in studying the charts of others. The other thing that you will understand when you're looking at the 12th house, Saturn in the 12th house um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or actually seven. Okay, so the seventh house is the house of marriage. It's the house of long-term relationships. Um, if you go six houses from the seventh house, you'll end up in the twelfth house. Again, you're counting the seventh house, and then you're counting up to six. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The sixth house or the house of desires from the marriage house can also be indicating what you see when you see Saturn in the 12th house. A lot of people look at Saturn in the 12th house, maybe they think they're going to be in jail for a long time. And since I've been talking about this prison thing and this prison theme of the 12th house, as a person who is the epitome of the 12th house, when you look at me, you see the 12th house. Um, I find that the house that actually indicates when a person going to jail is more the ninth house and the sixth house. Um, in studying people who either have had death sentences or either who have had um, short jail sentences, it seems that I have found that they never had the sun in the 12th house. I studied a group of about 11, let's 11 people who had major, major time. Some of them were lifers. Some of them were on death row. The son was never in the 12th house. No case. But there were six sons that were conjunct the MC. Now, um, the son can be in the 10th house, which is very, very common for famous people, but it's not always conjunct the MC. Now, that just indicates a lot of passion. Um, having stelliums in the sixth house, stelliums in the ninth house, 
or when you combine the ninth and the sixth house, there are at least four plus planets between those two houses. That can indicate a person who is has a tendency to commit crimes from what my understanding is in studying criminals. It is not the 12th house that will cause you to be locked up. A lot of times palace located in certain places. Of course, an afflicted childhood can lead you there was in the third and fourth houses. In addition to the palace being in the 12th house, a lot of times palace is, is going to be serving as like the legal person of the zodiac that will put you away um is is kind of that's kind of a hard aspect to have our hard placement for palace to be in the 12th house um or even for palace to be anywhere can be a negative thing also um one of the things you look for when determining whether or not a person is going to be locked up is um whether or not venus is opposing a lot of major um, planets, is conjuncting a lot of planets, or you don't see Venus at all in the kind of in the chart. So that will that affliction will prove more. You can get more from where Venus is, Venus aspects, and sixth and ninth house placements with regard to prison sentences and being locked up. Can you then you can't have in the twelfth house. 12th house, that's what we want. That 12th house, that's what we need. 12th house, any confinement that we are experiencing in the 12th house is what we like. Now, sometimes in the 12th house, you can have certain things placed upon you that you don't like, certain responsibilities depending on your other placements where you have to care for someone or have to do something that you really didn't want to do. And that could be a 12th house. Like for me, I mean, like who wouldn't want, who wouldn't want to have this life where you could just do, have fun and go party and, and, and have this great spouse or whatever, but you can't in the 12th house because you're more like, you might have a calling on your life. Um, the other thing that's true about the 12th house that a lot of people have stated is that um, you you can have afflictions with your father. Not, not only could it be that your father passed away, but you also have a bad, uh, even if the father is there, you can have an afflicted relationship with the father or the father had mental issues or personal or emotion problems that cause you not to have a close relationship with that person and but to have longed to have one. So a lot of times if you have son in the 12th house, you want to love your father. You want to be there for your father. You wanted your father in your life in a certain way, but he wasn't there. Now, that is true about what some people say about the 12th house. So, yes, there are negative aspects to the 12th house. There are positive aspects to the 12th house. And then the 12th house has to be looked at from where it stands in conjunction to other houses, like the 5th house and the 8th house, um, though, and, and also the 10th house. So, with regard to the 10th house, if you have a um, career, because the 10th house is the house of prestige, it's the house of um, what's happening. So let's say you have the sun in the 10th house, you have um, you have Jupiter in the 10th house, and your Jupiter and sun, it's just making everybody knows you. But you have... Um, and you have um, the sun in the 12th house. Or did I say, yeah, Jupiter? No, let's start over. You've got the sun in the 10th house. You've got Jupiter in the 10th house. And you've got some other planets like Mercury or Venus in the 12th house. Or you may have um, Saturn in the 12th house. Or you may have... Um, Something, something, some planet or asteroid that's not considered malef maleficent in the 12th house. Well, that just means did your money come in as a result of what you did in the 10th house? The 10th house is a house of notoriety, but you could be notorious for killing a whole bunch of folk and then have something in your 12th house that does not show that you had anything good. So for instance, you've got this 
fabulous 10th house that shows that you are notorious for something and, and Venus is not there. But then in your 12th house, you've got Pallas there in, in Capricorn or Scorpio or Aries. And you've got um, Saturn there. Are you? And that means you're going to be there for a long time. So it's not necessarily money there. It's just a long time of sorrow, not because it's the 12th house, but because it's the second house from the 10th. So the 10th house shows you, will you be famous? The 12th house shows you, will that fame bring you any money? What will that fame bring you? How will that fame lead you? Where is that fame taking you? So that is how you can find out more about the 12th house. I believe that the 12th house has been highly misunderstood as a place of, of sadness, affliction, confinement, criminals, blah, 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 blah. But the the thing that's going to, again, tell you about that is more the, the actual pieces to the puzzle, the pieces of the game that's going to tell you about that kind of stuff is Palace, Lilith, Ceres, um, and some other small minor asteroids in your specific, that, that actually indicate more about your specific life that will tell you what exactly is happening in your life this time, this particular carnation in the 12th house. Um, if you want to know whether or not a person is going to have a tendency for insanity, look at the 10th and the 8th houses. That's where you're going to find that because a lot of people are like, well, the eighth house is the house of death. It's the house of sex. No, the eighth house is the house of illicit sex. <laughs> it's the house of uncontrolled sex, sexual addictions, afflicted sex. The house of real sex, normal sex is the fifth house. So let's, let's first understand how to read the chart. Study the ancients. Study the masters. Open up yourself, do meditations to ask the masters to come in and show you about the 12th house before you start putting all these confines on the 12th house and scaring people about what's in their 12th house. Hopefully I have said something that will help you. Looks like I've gone over 20 minutes, but I'm trying to keep everything below that time. Take care, love you, and be sure to step in next week starting with the um, first series of the Spirit Science Teachings. Bye-bye.